All right, we're going to go over some anatomy of the heart, uh, some, some very basic structures, uh, some of the, most of the big ones that you'll see lying within the heart and around the heart, and uh, we'll get a little bit into uh, the physiology, not so much, that's for a different lecture. Uh, I'll give a brief review at the very end, so you can skip that if you don't want to listen to it, but we'll, we'll get into some, some pretty good detail of uh, what we're looking at right here behind me. Okay. So let's start with the pericardium. The pericardium is a, uh, it's a protective layer around the heart. It's, gonna, it's also going to anchor it um, to the diaphragm so it's not flopping all over the place as it's beating 70 times per minute on average. Um, there's a couple different layers to the pericardium. There's the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium. Here, you can see in the blue I've drawn um, a thick fibrous of what it sh is what it should be. The fibrous pericardium, it's protective. Uh, it's going to protect the heart. It's, it's, it's what anchors the heart to the diaphragm, the inferior portion of it, and then there's the superior portion of it, which is going to be more upward, and that's going to line the great vessels of the heart itself. It's going to protect the actual heart along with uh, uh, the vessels associated with it. Um, more deep to that, so we're getting closer to the heart, there's going to be the, the serous uh, pericardium, which that is composed of two different layers. The serous pericardium, or the first layer of the serous pericardium, pericardium uh, we'll see as the, the, the parietal pericardium. The parietal pericardium is a thin layer that is, uh, is connective tissue from the, the fibrous pericardium, and then to here the pericardial cavity, and then the epicardium, uh, which we'll talk about in just a sec. So we, have, we go from the fibrous pericardium, to the, to the serous pericardium, which is composed of two layers, the parietal pericardium, and then we go in more deep to that, the pericardial cavity, which is filled with pericardial fluid, and uh, there, there's some diseases associated with that, which uh, uh, could be uh, the, the, the pericardial fluid builds up too much and pushes, causes pressure against one of the ventricles here, making the heart have to work harder in order to pump blood throughout the body, and there can be some problems associated with that. Um, maybe in some fatal problems. Uh, okay, so more deep to the pericardial cavity, we have the visceral pericardium. Now, the visceral pericardium actually has another name for it, just depending on the context that you're talking about it. So when we're talking about the pericardium, we, we call this outer layer of the heart here, well, it's the inner layer of the party pericardium and the outer layer of the heart, the visceral pericardium. Viscera internal organs, pericardium, around the organ, which is in the heart, well, regards to the heart in this case. So, visceral pericardium is right here, right along the heart. Um, okay, so let's review on that. We have the pericardium, which is composed of the fibrous pericardium. Deep to that is the parietal pericardium, which is the first layer that you'll find in the serous pericardium. Deep to that is the pericardial cavity, which is filled with pericardial fluid. And then more deep to that is the visceral pericardium, the visceral pericardium. Okay, so that, that is the pericardium of the heart, the outer layer, which protects it and anchors the heart as well. Okay, so let's, um, let's talk about starting with that visceral pericardium. I said that there was another name to it. Well, we also call that the epicardium of the heart, the epi above outer layer of the heart. So I, I drew a, um, I don't know, like in a large view right here. See, it zooms in, and this is the wall of the heart, the heart wall, we'll call it. Okay, so this outer portion right here, this here is the epicardium. Now this layer is a smooth layer of tissue which is going to aid in the reduction of friction. So when the heart contracts, it's rubbing all over this tissue. If we don't have something there to um, to pad all that friction, there could be a lot of heat generated. You could cause tissue damage. A hole could burn. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a doctor, but um, this is this is going to pad the friction. It's going to reduce friction uh, when the heart contracts. So we'll go deep into that. This this is just a smooth outer outer layer of tissue. Deep to that is just a connective layer of fat and tissue, which both of these comprise uh, 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 make up the uh, the epicardium. 
Okay, so epicardium, then deep to that, we have the myocardium. Myo, muscle, cardium is the membrane. Myocardium, uh, cardiac muscle. Uh, if, you know, if you know anything about uh, the different types of muscle, you'll know that the myocardium is striated. It's, uh, it's arranged in syncytium, which is going to be beneficial to the electrical conductivity of the heart, which is going to... Uh, we may or may not get to it later on in this video. I don't know. Um, it, it's going to help in, in, in the way that the heart contracts blood in a more efficient way so it can better get blood throughout the body. Um, they, uh, they're, also, they're involuntary, uh, striated, uh, what else is there, range of syncytium, um, good stuff. Uh, we'll get into the fizz in a later lecture. Okay, so more deep to the myocardium is the endocardium. This is the, the most deep uh, layer of the, uh, the, uh, the heart membranes, <clears throat> or the heart wall. The endocardium is another smooth layer, which is also going to reduce fr friction or uh, turbulence, really, within the blood, uh, within the heart. So blood is going to s glide smoothly along it. It's not going to jumble and gurgle all over the place. It will just be nicer to, um, to, uh, to, to circulate throughout the body without all that turbulence. The endocardium uh, definitely helps here. And here is the trabeculae carne. Uh, we're not going to get too much of that, but that's just some... Um, uh, columns of uh, little muscles that are going to line the uh, inner wall of the heart. Okay, so epicardium, myocardium, and then this green line here is the endocardium. So that's superficial to deep. Okay, uh, now let's let's zoom out and take a look at the uh, the big picture of the heart. We'll start with the chambers and we'll move on to some vessels, and uh, and we'll get to the valves as well, the valves of the heart. Okay, so. You may know that there's four chambers to the heart. There's two atria, and then there's two, two ventricle, two ventricles. Okay, so and it's divided in left and right portions. It's a little counterintuitive. Uh, when you look at a, at a image or something on a screen or in front of you, and you're talking to someone and say, "Hey, look to the right," you you go to the right direction, which, like that. With the heart, it's backwards. It's it's in perspective to the patient. So here is my left side. It is the right side to you, but it's the left side that we're going to be talking about. That's how all medical terminology is in regards to locations on the heart. So I'm going to label actually here on the heart so you don't get uh, confused or anything like that. Um, all right, so we're going to have down here the left side of the heart. Now this is brown. Oops. This is brown because I do not have red. Now I think red is for the showing of uh, oxygenated blood. Blue is for deoxygenated blood. I do have blue though, uh, somewhere around here. Here it is. Get this real quick for you, just in case you forget what I'm talking. All right. So we have the left and the right side of the heart. So we'll start with the, uh, actually, let's start with the right side of the heart, where deoxygenated blood is going to be coming in. Okay, so deoxygenated blood is going to come in from three primary sources. You're going to have your in, or inferior and superior vena cava, and then the, the coronary sinus, which you can't really see. Uh, the coronary sinus, I can't really see on this picture. I mean, sorry. Uh, the coronary sinus is on the posterior, the back portion of the heart. Here is an anterior view. The coronary sinus is, uh, is where all the blood from the heart itself is going to drain into and then come into here, the right ventricle. Now when I say from the heart itself, the heart needs its own supply of blood to nourish it and keep it going, just as any other um, organ in the body or any other cells, they need their own supply. The heart needs its own too. So heart blood is going to come from heart deoxygenated blood. It's going to come from the coronary sinus into the left or the right atrium here. 